In this video, I'd like to take a look at the newer four-piece infrared filter set. This is a set of four lens filters with various infrared cutoffs. Uh, there's a 720 nanometer, a 760 nanometer, an 850 nanometer, and a 950 nanometer. These come in a variety of filter threads. Um, I got the 52 uh, millimeter filter thread and then a couple step-up rings so I could use them on a variety of lenses. So let's take a look and see uh, how these look. I've got some shots that I did, uh, some sort of real world shooting, um, and uh, some test shots that I did. And I did these on a couple different cameras, an unconverted uh, Fujifilm X-T2 that I used, and then a uh, Fujifilm X-T20 that has been converted to, with an internal 590 nanometer filter. And I'll, I'll point out what's being used there. Uh, so first of all, let's take a look at some of the sort of real world shooting that I did. This is on the converted camera with the 850 uh, nanometer filter added. Uh, so you're going to get the uh, really strong, you know, black and white effects. Um, on these, uh, the, the post-production was usually these will come out of camera with a bit of a purple or violet cast. Um, and then you can convert these to black and white um, and then work with them from there. So I was pretty happy with uh, the results of the, the shooting I did on this day. Uh, with that filter, um, a lot of my shooting is kind of run and gun, and so I'm not. I don't spend a lot of time uh, fiddling with um, switching uh, lenses. Um, so in this case, I just stuck with the 850 and did a variety of shooting there. But again, pretty happy with the results of how that looked. Okay, so that is some some a bit of real world shooting. So now let's uh, dive into um, some of the tests that I did. Uh, the first shot is with my unconverted camera. So uh, just an example of what this would look like. This scene would look like in visible light. The second shot um, is uh, the converted camera. Um, so with no lens filters included at all. So this is the 590 nanometer. The third shot is the converted camera. So it's got that internal 590 plus the 720 external uh, lens filter from newer. Um, so that's the uh, sort of a combination of the two, the internal filter plus the external filter. The fourth shot here is uh, the 760 external filter, the 850 shot, um, and then the, the 950 is the final one. So let's take a look at, um, break some of these down and look a little more closely at a comparison between these. So here on the left is the uh, 590 internal filter. Um, and then on the right is that same camera with the 590 filter plus uh, the 720. Um, so you can see we, we lose some of the color in the foliage. We still have a little bit of sky color. So in all of these test shots, I uh, set the white balance um, and did a channel swap. Um, but th there's, and, and some, in some cases, a little bit of uh, exposure uh, compensation, but but pretty much that was it. So trying to limit the amount of processing done so you can get a, an example of what these look like. Um, in the uh, next comparison, so on the left is the 720 compared to the 760 on the right. So we're still, still got a little bit of color in the 720 and then the color really starts to be diminished in the 760. 760 compared to the 850. You can see when we get to the 850, We've lost all of the color, uh, the visible color. We're now into the infrared spectrum only. Um, and uh, just a black and white conversion at this point. And then finally, a comparison between the 850 and the 950. What I've, what I've seen in general is that uh, the 850 and the 950 are very close. The 850 has a little bit more contrast. It's capturing a little bit more of the infrared range. Um, 850 up to, say, maybe about 1,000 the extent of where the sensor is going to um, stop capturing the light. Um, and then the 950 is only going to go from about 950 to 1,000. So uh, a little less range of um, uh, frequency uh, wavelengths to capture. So you're going to get a little bit less contrast is what I'm seeing. So in this next sequence, um, uh, let me explain what we're seeing here. So the first shot on the upper left is the... Again, the 590 internal with no external filter. The second shot is actually that same shot. It's a copy of it, a virtual copy, with some editing in Lightroom to try to mimic the look of the 720. 
uh, because really with, with many of these filters, uh, you can you can get pretty close to mimicking the look of them through editing. So they're not really sort of essential. One of the reasons I converted my camp first couple conversions to 590 was because of the ability to mimic the looks of other infrared as well. And, and you can definitely mimic the looks here. So uh, the second shot is the 590 only, and then compared to the third shot, which is the 590 plus the 720, you can see the look is pretty close. And then of course, along the bottom row, we have the 760, the 850 and the 950. So let's kind of look at each one of these. So first, um, we're looking at the uh, the same same shot, basically the the unconverted, but but one of them is modified. The one on the right is modified to look like the 720. Now let's compare uh, the on the left is the um, the 590 without a filter but edited to look like the 720. And then on the right is the actual 720 with the 720 newer filter. So you can kind of see the comparison. You can get pretty close in editing. Um, so if you're, if you're trying to uh, capture as much in camera as you can, the filters can be helpful. If you don't mind spending a little time editing, then you could get pretty close without the filters. Next up, we'll compare the 720 to the 760. So 760 is that last bit of visible light uh, available before we uh, move entirely into the infrared spectrum. And then here we have the 760 compared to the 850 where we've lost all the color. And finally the 850 compared to the 950. So again, we're seeing the similar to the last test, a little bit more contrast in the 850 uh, compared to the 950. 590 uh, without an external filter. Uh, in the upper left, and then the second shot is the 590 with the 720 and so on, with the 760 on the right, and then on the bottom, the 850 and the 950. So you can really start to see how each of each step of the infrared cutoff, we begin to lose more and more color as we move into the infrared only in black and white. So this is the 590 on the left with the 720 newer filter on the right. Still seeing a little bit of color. This is the 720 compared to the 760. This is the 760 compared to the 850. And then finally the 850 compared to the 950. Still seeing a little bit more contrast in the 850 than the 950. This sequence was actually shot with the unconverted camera. So the Fujifilm X-T2 uh, that I have that has not been converted. It's my visible light camera. So you can see the shot on the upper left. Um, is, you know, the, your standard visible light shot. Um, and then each of the newer filters applied the 720, 760, 850, and 950 to each of these. Now, what's particularly interesting is that, you know, in a, in the converted camera, that internal filter, um, has been pulled off and replaced with a, um, uh, an infrared filter. So, uh, the, you're just cutting off the infrared, but in this, in this unconverted camera, that internal filter is still trying to, to block out the infrared, which in a sense is kind of doing battle with these external filters that are trying to filter out the visible light. So the internal filter filters on infrared, these external lens filters filter out visible light. And the result is a lot of light being blocked and you need really long exposures, um, in order to um, uh, make a solid exposure here. So, uh, this first shot, um, you can see was, uh, one six hundredth of a second. Uh, but the minute we start, uh, putting on these filters, then the exposure times go up dramatically. And so in order to shoot these filters with a unconverted regular visible light camera, you're, you're almost going to need a tripod or some kind of a, a stable platform to take these shots on. And, and the other thing that, that was really particularly challenging with these is that they were much more difficult to uh, white balance um, and, and figure out the, the auto settings for white balance that in, in, say, raw therapy didn't work very well and trying to manually set it was difficult. Uh, it was very challenging to set to, to get to, to manage the colors in these shots because it's this combination of um, some of the infrared, some of the visible light, long exposures, lots of grain, lots of noise, etc. Uh, the second, sh uh, third shot on the upper right here is the 760. The exposure time uh, jumps up to 12 seconds now um, as, as the filter is even stronger. Uh, the third shot is the 850, and this one was exposed at 25 seconds. 
And then the final, the 950 was, this was also at 25 seconds, but it was a couple stops underexposed and I had to increase the exposure in Lightroom. Uh, this is the uh, 720, um, so a couple second exposure. Um, not too bad in terms of the noise, uh, just a little bit of noise. This is the um, 760, uh, 12 second exposure, so a little bit more noise. The colors are starting to get a little uh, crazier and harder to manage. Uh, white balance, particularly difficult. This is the uh, 850 nanometer, 25 second exposure, tons of noise, um, weird color casts all over the place. Um, so, you know, very challenging to get sort of a, sort of a clean exposure. And then finally the, um, the 950. So uh, this one has a whole lot of noise, super visible noise, ragged edges, and just kind of a really cruddy image quality. So um, definitely, definitely a challenge there. That's that's a good summary of um, my experience with these um, uh, these newer filters. So a look at the newer external camera filters. Um, very inexpensive. Um, I think the the best circumstance is to is to add them to an existing converted infrared camera. That's where you get the the, the really the best value um, and the best image quality. In particular, I like the um, the the seven twenty. Um, is great uh, for giving you that little bit of a blue sky and uh, a white foliage look. The 850 is is really good for black and white with a lot of contrast. You know, is it overkill as a four pack? I mean, maybe I don't I don't see as much value in the 760 and the 950. Um, if this had been a two pack, I think it could have been just as valuable. But I do like those two. Furthermore, if you look at trying to use these with a visible, uh, unconverted camera. I just don't think the quality is there. If you're looking for ugly colors and uh, a lot of noise, if that's maybe a creative vibe you're going for, I could see trying that, but it um, doesn't really work with, with my aesthetic. Uh, but I've been very happy using the, the, the 720 and the 850 on a converted camera. Um, so there you go. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Thanks.